In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever and to the age of all ages, amen. First of all, we thank the Lord for a beautiful day, for a beautiful weekend, and a happy Canada Day to everyone to enjoy this long weekend. And we're going to be blessed with more rain during the week, So, but the weekend is uh, sunshine, so let's enjoy, enjoy both. Actually, this is what His Holiness Pope Tawadros teaches us, there is no good weather and bad weather. We need all types of weather so that we may, we may live and, and nourish. Uh, again, let me remind you of the season of the church. It is the season of the Holy Spirit. It is the season of the work of the Holy Spirit. So when we, uh, when we hear today's gospel, we need to understand it from this lens. And the sun is shining. Is everyone of us or everyone in the world deserve this sunshine or maybe we think sometimes oh there are some people who do not deserve to see the sunshine but our Lord is generous and gracious he shines with his light with his Sun on the righteous and the wicked and this is his message to us be children of the Most High so the essence of today's gospel or today's message is to be children, to be like our Father. The essence and, and also so that God would make us understand what does it mean to be good to everybody. Think of how you want people to treat you. Think of how you want people to treat you, not only when you do good things, but also when you do mistakes when you do bad things? Would you like people to forgive you, give you a second chance, uh, respond to your need or not? So this is what he says to us. Be children of the Most High. Do like your Father who is in heaven. And also, do to others what you would like others do to you. However, this is not an easy, it's not an easy commandment. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit of God. We need the Holy Spirit of God not only to do the commandment, to do this commandment, but also to have the wisdom and discernment to do this commandment. Because this is usually one of the blocks, one of the stumbling blocks for us, how to love enemies, how to love people who do bad things to us, how to respond favorably to all people. This is a very challenging, very challenging commandment. And that's why in the Pauline today, we heard uh, St. Paul is, is telling us how to do this and what we need. He says, continue, continue earnestly in prayer. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meaning that we need to pray to God to give us strength and to give us all ability. How? Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open us, open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. So by doing goodness, this is a door that is given to us to speak the mystery of God. And also, he's asking us, walk in wisdom, walk in wisdom. So how to walk in wisdom and discernment? How to really love the enemy and how to have wisdom when we love the enemies? First, who is my enemy? Do we have enemies? We are Christian people, we are, we are peaceful people, right? So do we have enemies or we do not have enemies? We're peaceful people, right? We will have enemies because we are peaceful, peaceful people. They have called our Lord Jesus Christ Beelzebub and he has demons. So if they have done this with our Lord, with our master, how about us? Would they not do this? Yes. So we have enemies, the enemies that we are allowed to have, the enemies that we are allowed to have, are those because of our faith and values. Not because of our misconduct. We are not to create enemies by misconduct. This is not, these are not enemies. This is, I am committing evil. I'm committing something wrong. So if I do something wrong and I have enemies, this is not what the Bible is talking about. 
But many times we confuse this. Sometimes we do wrong things. We respond unfavorably. We behave in, in, in way that make us create enemies. This is not the type of enemies that the Bible is talking about. The enemies that the Bible is talking about is when we do good and we are persecuted and when we have enemies. It is exactly like, like Joseph. Did Joseph have enemies? He was a righteous, he was a pure man. He was a pure youth. But did he have enemies? Of course. Potiphar's wife was his enemy because of his purity, because of his value. So she was an enemy to him. She persecuted him because of his values, because of his faith. But what did he do? Did he hate her? No. Did he try to defend himself? No. But he left his garment and he ran away to maintain his purity. And he maintained his purity and maintained his righteousness and forgiveness. Two people in the prison with him, they had dreams. They, he explained the dreams of both. And he told them, please remember me. Remember me before Pharaoh that he would get me out of prison. But the, the one person who had favor with Pharaoh, with Pharaoh forgot about Joseph. What did Joseph do? Did he hold a grudge against that person? No, he did not. But actually he was kind. How about his brothers and sisters? Who, how, his brothers who throw him in the well, were they his enemies? They persecuted him because he, maybe, maybe because they were jealous of him. But when he got an opportunity, when he got an opportunity, what did he do to the people who were supposedly his enemies, who did harm to him? He forgave them. And actually, he was able to see God's plan through this. So the enemies are not the enemies whom we hurt. The enemies are one who hurt us because of our faith and because of our, and because of our values. Of course, this is a very complex situation. Sometimes it's very hazy, not clear how to respond in certain situations. And that's why we need the power and the discernment. We need to continue to pray for the power and, of the Holy Spirit to give us ability to do goodness regardless and to discern how to do the right thing. We need the power of the Holy Spirit and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to distinguish between forgiveness and trust. They are not the same. Forgiveness is not the same as trust. We need the discernment of the Holy Spirit to, deter, to discern between forgiveness and boundaries with people. We need the discernment of the Holy Spirit to Dif differentiate between forgiveness and responsibility. Each is, is different. If you heard about a babysitter who abuses the children, what would you do? Would you forgive her? Are we asked to forgive people who do wrong things? Of course we are asked to forgive. But are you going to hire her for your children? Of course not. Of course not. There is a difference between forgiveness and between boundaries or trust. I cannot trust this person. It doesn't mean that I do not forgive this person. If you are, if you are a manager and you have an employee who always comes late, would you forgive this person? Of course, you would forgive on the personal level. But would you continue to hire this person? Probably not. And not hiring this person has nothing to do with forgiveness, but it has to do with your responsibility as a manager and how to do the right work. 
So it is not an easy, it is a very complex situation in many, in many cases. We are asked to give to everyone. How about, how about if someone comes to you and says, I need, I need $500 to fix my car. And then a minute later, you get, you have only $500. And a minute later, you hear of, or, or, or a mother who has five children who needs a new equipment for her for, to do the laundry instead of going outside in the winter to do the laundry every, every, every other day. How, what would you do? And both ask you to give to them. And we are asked to respond favorably, but you have only one $500. How would we respond? It is not easy, it is difficult. So we need the wisdom and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to fulfill God's commandment, whether it is loving the enemies, whether it is giving to everyone who asks us to give, and how to be children of the Most, of the most High. We are indeed in dire need to pray to nourish the Holy Spirit in us, to have the ability to live according to the biblical command and have wisdom and discernment when to do what and how to do it. Again, the essence of the Sermon on the Mount is number one, Jesus is my satisfaction. So when I am hurt, I do not only look to myself and to my hurt, but also look to Jesus so that I am able to forgive and be a child of the Most High. We have been reconciled with our Lord when we were enemies. When the Lord died for us, the Bible says, while yet we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ died for me when I was an enemy to him when I was doing against his will, but he died for me so that he would grant me forgiveness so that I would come and approach and take of his grace and take of his forgiveness and also to be able to extend this forgiveness to people who, are, who could potentially be enemy again because of my values, because of my faith, not because of my wrongdoings and that we become children of the Most High. So we are invited to pray that the Holy Spirit is nourished, is inflamed, inflamed in us so that we are always, our behavior, our conduct show that we are children of the Most High. So that our conduct show that we are satisfied with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our only satisfaction and we become the children of the Most High. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen.